Here we go. Hello and welcome. I'm Glimo. I'm the Keeper of the Chronicles for this Call of Cthulhu Mask of Nyarlathotep campaign on Roll20, streaming to Twitch and YouTube. Welcome to Session 38. What horrors will you unearth in China this week? Uh, apologies for the long delay between episodes. Unfortunately, uh, real life got the better of me, and the Keeper failed his sanity roll, and so I had to take a, uh, a couple weeks off, but we are back, and hopefully going to be able to uh, progress things, and, and the end, I think, is in sight. So, uh, just a reminder for everyone, uh, last session, you spent a good deal of time trying to get yourself killed by firm action. Uh, then you broke into Ho Fang's warehouse. While you were doing that, two guards noticed the break-in. One went to get help. Martin has subdued the other one and tied him to a chair. The rest of you are upstairs in Ho Fang's office. So, it I is... I tied his arms behind his back. Yeah, well, you had his arms tied behind his back, and I thought, I thought you said you also tied him to the, to the chair of the desk that you were hiding behind previously. But... If okay. that's not what you did, that's fine. We can, you know, then fine. You just have his arm tied up behind his back. Uh, yeah, because uh, what I was going to do is... Uh, there's no, like, stunning blow where I can knock him out, right? Kind of there thing. is not, no. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm happy to put a coup de grace, ro you know, rule in. Like, you've, you've got him subdued. If you, if you decide this is it for him, then, well, this is it for him. Um, but there's no, there is no, uh, stunning blow. Oh, come on, it's gotta be, this is pulp, you know, an old smack to the back of the head takes everybody out. I, what I was going to do was, um, uh, stuff a handkerchief in his mouth and bring him upstairs and, uh, tell the guys that we need to go. I, I didn't really want to kill him if I didn't have to. Okay. Um... Okay, well, that, that, that we can work out during the initiative order. So, it is late the night of Sunday, December 6th, 1925. And as I bring up our initiative tracker here, um, so Martin just took his action of subduing the dude the dude is being subdued uh this other dude is gonna come and do some things off screen and then now it is oh, seamus's turn to act uh but to be fair i don't know of anything that's going on well, yeah. you do not you yes, you do not know what's happening downstairs. You are upstairs and you are in Ho Fang's office. Um a reminder of what you found at the end of last session as I move my turn order out of my face. Um so there is a floor safe here that you found with a spot hidden roll. Right. Uh there's a table over here that has a bunch of maps on it there's his desk here and there's a filing cabinet here um okay uh can i i'll move to go take a look at that floor safe okay i will allow you to make a locksmith roll this round if you would like to try to open it sure Success. Okay. Uh, this is not a difficult safe, so you are able to open it. Uh, it contains a shitload of money. 
Um, rifling, <laughs> rifling through it quickly, you see uh, First a hand. large number of silver and gold coins, a large number of uh, banknotes, and two uh, negotiable drafts. Um, I will say that you can... You can look at these further over, you know, in the next round, but, you know, off the top of your head, you would say that there are more than a hundred coins, uh, you know, s s silver coins in there, and probably a hundred banknotes in there. Okay, so there's only really one thought that's going through my head, and that's, when did I get to the point where I'd be disappointed just to find money? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you've got. Uh, Lewis. Oh, sorry there, I had to unmute myself. Um, I get, what's this over here? That's a filing cabinet. I'm going to carefully look through the filing cabinet. I have some Chinese language ability, so I'm going to... Okay. I do believe. So let me take a quick look just to make sure I do. I don't want to say you something do. when I... Um, yeah. So you... In your... In, in, the, in the brief what you can do in one round, um, you don't find any really new information here. Uh, you find a number of um, shipping documents. Uh, they list a whole bunch of locations that you've seen before, including the Penhu Foundation, uh, Omar al-Shakti in Cairo, um, the address that you've seen before in Australia, and they mostly refer to uh, art objects as what is being shipped or received. Um, so that is what you what you're able to find in the filing cabinets. All right. Well, I let them know that there is a connection at least. Um, but I mean, you've seen the other side of all of these shipping documents, except for the Australia ones, because you didn't go yeah. there. Um, but I do inform them that I throughout I'm throughout attending... your uh your adventures. I'm whispering to the other two that, uh, well, here are the, at least the transport documents that we have seen, um, similar to in England and Egypt, um. Uh, yeah, so the, there is a connection there. So he's definitely hip deep in it. Um, Jesse, you had spent last round looking out the window. Uh, you are standing in the hallway. There is a door to your to the east, and the hallway in front of you leads into uh, Al Shakti's. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ho Fang's office, uh, where all your compatriots are. Is there um, any labels on the door? Like, is it someone's office? I guess it wouldn't make any difference, but because I don't read Chinese. Uh, there, yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing that's that's legible to you on it. It's just a door. I open the door. Okay, you open the door. Uh. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So, uh, you see inside there uh, an office. Uh, it's, uh, you would guess this is, um, you know, a junior assistant's office. Um, you know, it's slightly larger than, uh, than just secretaries. Um, but there, you know, there's there's a desk, 
there's some chairs uh, and there's a small filing cabinet in the corner. Okay. Um, I rifle through the filing cabinet and or other desk drawers that aren't locked, I guess. Okay. Uh, in the, you know, during the round, uh, you come across a bunch of documents in Chinese that you don't speak. Um, they look, you know, from cursory looking at them, uh, you know, like the, like, like business documents. There's some tallies of numbers, um, but nothing in here that, uh, that, uh, you know, strikes your fancy too much. Okay. Alistair. The juniors probably wouldn't have much. I'm gonna rifle the desk. Okay. You rifle the desk. Uh, give me a spot hidden roll. Hard spot hidden. Um, so you uh, you don't find very much in the desk. There are um, there's there's you know a bunch of of uh, papers, um, but. The, the desk itself is fairly simple and you know it doesn't it doesn't really have a lot of drawers to it um, so there's there's not a whole lot other than you know a, a, a small sheaf of papers uh, written in Chinese uh, that you don't understand um, that's what's in the desk all right I'll grab the papers for Lewis to look at later. Okay. Martin, back to you. Um, so I I I tied the dude's arms behind his back, right? And I yes. stuffed the handkerchief in his mouth. Okay. Uh so I got old painless, my 45, and I stick it in the back of it in the small of his back and uh Tell him to go upstairs. Okay. Um, let me check something here on his stat sheet. Okay. Uh Okay. Let me uh let me make a roll here to see if he's going to do something stupid or not. I'm going to say that that's the stupid result. Um so as you start walking him uh, up, he attempts to, uh, he's going to attempt to break free. So he will need... I'm going to say it's going to be an opposed strength roll. Um, his, his strength versus your strength in tying the, uh, the bonds. So why don't you go ahead and give me a, give me a strength roll. You got a regular success and he fails. Um, so he, you can tell that he is resisting you but he is completely ineffectual in in doing so 
uh he is is not able to to slip his bonds he's not he's not m- making forward progress you can tell he's he's trying like hell to get out and get the drop on you but he just there's it's just not happening for him uh what would you like to do uh all right so he's trying did i get him up the stairs or is he no still on the no he before before you got him got up the stairs you know when once you told him to move he just starts struggling to try to try to break free all right well i gave him a chance and uh that was the wrong decision so um I'm going to put a bullet in his temple and uh, just try to <laughs> run up the stairs. Okay. Uh, roll, me a, roll me a handgun roll. As long as you don't get, get a, a, a misfire, then, like, if you, if you hit him, he's, he's, he's gone. Because he can't, he can't dodge. You know, you can, you can easily, you know, you've, you've got him restrained. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so he's dead. Um, great. You have, um, you have fired a bullet, uh, inside this, uh, this warehouse. It was kind of loud. Um, and I will say that you can, uh, that you can make it to the landing, uh, here up the first, you know, first set of stairs, uh, in your, in your 10 seconds. Uh, I'm still wearing my balaclava. (laughs) Of course you are. I never had any doubts. So I'm like a terrorist from an 80s movie. Um, okay. And now I need to... Add these guys, and let's see. Oh, this is gonna get interesting real quick. Oh yeah, and seventy-five. Okay. Um, I'm assuming we heard that up here. Uh, yes, National you guys. Si- you guys just to get the hell out of Dodge. You guys just just heard a gunshot uh, from downstairs. Okay, so right. these I'm guys gonna be, all yeah, get well, to wait. act next. Everybody except number four gets to act pretty much now. So they are. All right, so they're going to come. This is probably about as far as they're going to get in their turn. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's not looking good. You just heard uh, the sound of a forty-five caliber pistol from downstairs so 50 50 our good buddy's gotten himself into a little trouble or the other 50 he's caused some trouble (laughs) okay uh i'll start making my way down to the uh are you taking the contents of the safe in front of you before you uh before you book Gentlemen, there's a lot of cash in here. I leave it up to your discretion whether or not you take it, and I start booking it. <laughs> Do you think we can get downstairs, or should we go out the window? There's a window big enough? There's a window right here. You've got uh, two windows right here, here and here. Um, and then another window here, and another window here. Are they barred? They are not. And you are only one floor up. Like, frankly... I've fallen from further. Like, frankly, you could... Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Like, (laughs) you know... You you can jump for it, and if you critically fail your dex roll, you're going to take 1d6 points of damage. This is, you know, mechanically, like, Mm -hmm. this is... 
This is this is easy peasy. I mean, you know, you may need to okay. You may need to uh, you like if you want to be quick about it, you're gonna need to you know throw the chair through the window to to yeah. to bust it open. But yeah, like this is. So, gentlemen, uh, before we exit, uh, looking at these windows, uh, coinage. Sure, grab some, particularly the gold. I mean, I, I like I'll say that you you know you guys did bring some sacks you you did say this last session that you were bringing some sacks with you i'll say that you can scoop the contents of the of the safe out between last round and this round um and 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 at least make it over towards you know and start and start moving you you won't get out the window but you you can at least make it over to the window yeah at least make it look like it's a robbery not like something right. it, it, it look while while they're scooping out of the safe i will be opening the window and getting things prepared are you sacks of dollar symbols on them so <laughs> if so uh, uh i will say if you you know if you open the window um it's going to take you you know you're gonna have to be a lot more uh careful getting out you're only going to be able to go one at a time um because you've got to get around the frame um as opposed to, you know, if you get the chair and bust it out, then two at a time, you'll be able to, you'll be able to go out those, you know, either one of those big windows. How do you want to do it, boys? Use the north window in style. And there was already a gunshot, so uh, stealth is kind of out the window. <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah. all right so i'm going to make i'm just going to bust the window out okay while you they do. while they take care of the safe you do that are you are you also going going out the window with the chair or are you going to uh wait yeah i might as well because i mean you know that way i'm down there and i'm guarding okay once they get down so i'm going to do you have any points in jump Let's take a look. I think I have just the base ones, but I'll take a look just to make sure. Um, jump, 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 jump. Where is jump? There it is. I just have the twenty. Okay, I'll I'll allow you to either make a make a jump check to try to you know negate any any falling damage. Uh, the other option is if you want to take another whole round. Uh, you guys did say that you bought a grappling hook. You know, I'll let you, you know, yeah, hook that down I, and do a... a rope, and then you'll need to make a climb check next round. <laughs> I don't know yeah. mechanically which is better for you, but... Well, uh, no, they, either one is bad for me, so... Um, and I figure we're going to need to rush. If you just want a GTFO and just jump, make yep. them give me a jump, a jump yeah, roll. Yeah, it, it should be fun. Ah! Hard success. <laughs> you take no damage. You you jump out just fine. You land like a cat. You're you're good to go. Dun, 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 dun. And I will, after I get down, I will pull out my pistol and be ready. Okay, Jesse. You heard a gunshot and you heard a bunch of scrambling uh, from uh, from the room to your north. You heard Seamus say something about, and you heard. Broken glass. What are you doing? Same thing I always do. Um, I don't know. I guess I first I need to go out in the hall and see what the heck's going on. Then, so wait, you see pandemonium in here. You see Seamus stuffing a bunch of money into a bag with dollar signs on it. Uh, you see Lewis is gone now. Um, you see a broken window. You notice that there's no longer a chair at the desk. Um, and that's what you can see in this room. Um, okay. And there's if no you other... just want to make a running leap out the window, I will allow you to do that on this round. If you want to do something any more uh, planned than that or controlled than that, then that'll take you another round. And just tell me what you're doing so that we can uh, stat it out. Uh, well, 
let's see, there's what I would do with character knowledge. <laughs> Um. Th yeah. There isn't any other way. And the, this is the top. This is the top is four, right? Yes. All right. Um. And wait. So who's left in the room? Just the people. Okay. Just the people in the room here. Yep. Well, I guess I asked first of all, what the heck is going on? And um, I know Martin is not with us. And we have no way of knowing if he's coming back up, I guess. Um, wait, what's the measured approach of getting out of here? The measured approach would be, you know, doing something with a rope, either grappling hook or tying it to something and then climbing down. The go-for-it approach is just jump out the window. Is there anything... Is there any way of climbing down... Without a rope? No. To conveniently place down spout? There is not. Oh, come on. There's always a conveniently placed down, <laughs> down spout. You are literally one floor up. The worst that's going to happen to you is D6 damage. I'm only willing to, you know, push uh, the convenience factor so far. Um, let's okay, can quiet. you guys hear me? How's yes. the audio? I switched over to Bluetooth. That's pretty good. So took, okay. the, took the jack out of the equation. <laughs> <laughs> Solved the problem. Uh, damn it, because my climb is better than my jump. Uh, you know, okay. if you want to take another round, you can do you can do some climb. But it will it will take another round. I don't think they can react that quickly, to tell you the truth, but. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't. Know. But if I took the round to do the rope, then everybody else has a better chance of getting down, right? It is true. All right, let's or do that. Or anybody who that has cl better climb than jump, yes. Okay, you're putting. You're I'm gonna put, go with that. You're putting a, a <laughs> grappling hook out the. Sure, why not? Okay, you do that. That's what you spend. If your anything round else, doing. it backs up the break-in story. Great. <laughs> Alistair. Why someone magically jumped up a floor, went through the window, stole the stuff, and came back out. Perfect. I believe it. <laughs> Alistair. What? I guess I'm I'm, I'm a jumping. Are you jumping or are you climbing down the rope that, that uh, Jesse just provided for you? Uh, they're both 20, so I, I, mean, I, I guess I'll use the rope because that seems a little safer. Okay. Give me a uh, climb roll. Seems unlikely that, you could, that that would actually be worse. Do you want to spend five luck to uh, make that a success? Yeah, I'll spend five luck. I've, okay, I've then money. you make it down with... Uh, it's it's touch and go for a second because you're an old man, but uh, you make it to the bottom uh, and uh, you are outside the building. Martin. Don't have that kind of excitement in the mu museum. <laughs> in one round, can I take? Uh, uh, can I take? A, let's see if this tool works. This chair and uh, prop it against this door. Uh, can I do that in one round, or I was actually yes, going to say do that, that on can... the reverse side. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I, I'm assuming you mean that you're going to go through that. You're going to take the chair with yeah. you through the door, and then prop it against the door. Yeah. Uh, if it, well, when I get up to when I get up to the second floor, yeah. does, does the door have a have a doorknob, or is it or is it like uh, I don't know? It has is a it... doorknob. It was it the and the and yes, it does have a doorknob. So in one round, can I take the chair, go through the door, and then prop the door up against the doorknob to brace it? Uh, I will or... say yes. I okay. will say that you can if that you can do that. And uh, and so now you are on this side of the door uh, with the door uh, barred with a chair. All right. Okay. Now. The mooks are going to move. So the mooks are going to come down. Uh, two of them are going to freak out over their 
dead companion, and then these guys. Do they have to make a sand roll? Gonna decide. Um, these uh, guys, the, you know that 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 might have been you know a thing, but. Uh, then these guys are gonna so decide fuck our orders. They killed someone. We're going upstairs after them. And Seamus. Okay. Uh, so uh, have I filled it uh, enough? You have. You have filled your bag. All right. So let me go through the the window. My jump or my climb is the same thing. And so much lower than my deck. So what do I roll here? <laughs> uh, I, I, you can, you know, I mean, if they're the same, then it doesn't really matter. But you know, I guess mechanically, you know, or, or, or RP wise, are you the type of guy that will that will just jump headlong? Or are you gonna, you know, try to uh, try to climb? I will. I will say if you if you fail on the climb, uh, you'll take you'll take less damage than just jumping because you'll at least yep. be able to brace yourself with the rope. Right. Rope burns. So. I am going to try the uh, the climb. That's hilarious considering the difference between the climb or jump in my decks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look here. Crit success. Oh, Holy wow. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, you... Uh... <laughs> You are a belay master. Uh, yeah, you oh, you you get down no problem. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> uh, Lewis, you are on the bottom floor now. Alistair and Seamus have made it down with you. Now there's a rope. Um, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to um. Is this a building here, or what is this? That's just a scale. Uh, I'm sorry, where? I didn't I assume see this you're... is not a building, but no, no, that's just that. That's just the the little box on the on the top of the map. All right, I'm kind of waiting for. I have my gun out. I'm kind of keeping an eye in either. Actually, I'm going to tell. Um, uh, who is the first, the second person down? Um. Uh, you got Seamus and Alistair with you. Alistair, I'm going to tell him to keep an eye this way. And I'm going to step over here and carefully look around the corner where I know the other doors are at. So that just kind of peeking around just to make sure that we have both areas covered. Okay. All right, I'll be looking around. Looks like my camera decided to crap out. Probably yeah, when you're, I added the you're, Bluetooth. You're, you're awfully still. <laughs> it's telling me that the device needs a restart. Nice. So if I figure out break, I'll restart. Okay. That's exciting. Uh, Jesse, are you climbing down the rope you threw out? So I see Martin come in. Or I have already seen him coming. I will say that yes, you you see him at the at the end of the hall. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna climb down. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say to Martin, uh, time to leave. I guess. Let's see here. I can't remember which one is which. All right. Hard success. Yes, you make it down absolutely successfully. No damage taken. Uh, Alistair, are you doing anything with your turn other than uh, looking out for the possibility of pursuers? Uh, I'm, yes, I'm, uh, I'm the lookout. Okay. Uh, Martin. You just saw, you came in, you blocked the door, and you just saw Jesse wave at you and then go down a rope uh, out the window at the end of the hall. Uh, all right, well, can I get through the window and around? Or... I'll say that you can, yep. Okay. You can either jump or climb. I, I will climb. Okay. Success. Yes, you make it down uh, no problem. 
Okay. So, all of you are on the ground. Uh, these guys are going to spend around fighting with a chair. Uh, I'm gonna... Let's see, do these guys have... These, none of these guys have luck. Um, tell you what, uh, Jesse, since you were the one that lowered the rope, give me a luck roll. Luck roll. Hold on a second. Nope. Okay. Can you spend luck on a luck roll? You cannot <laughs> spend luck on a luck roll. Okay, so these two guys decide to open the door and come out and see what's going on. And uh, so they are... Uh, like... 15 feet away from you um, as you have all made it down to the bottom. Uh, but they do not have time to react. They're just there and seeing all of you. Uh, Seamus, what are you doing? Can okay. they see all of us since we're around the corner? Uh, so I'm going to say, so because this is the first floor map, so you guys are over here. Lewis, you're looking around the corner. Um, they see you looking at them, looking at you, looking at them. Um, do you want me to do a, um, I, I, I'm going to say that they, you know, you, you can definitely see them, you know, you see them first. come out. Uh, right. and, and it I'm looks like they I'm going to quickly duck in. Okay. So that, since I saw him first, I'm hoping that they didn't see me, and I go, we got to get going. Whisper to him. Uh, let's Ow. see. These... They just came out the door. And then I get ready to move. Okay, give me, uh, give me a stealth check. All right. Let me get my character. Stealth. Yes, a hard okay, success. Okay, yes. Uh, so far, they have not seen you. Um, and I'm, so get, I'm, I'm bleeding you, the group. Are you guys? Out of here. Are you guys just you know gonna gonna disappear Book into it. the night? Yep. Book it. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I will say that you get away. Uh, where are you going after all of this? All we got is gold coins. No. Got a bunch more than just bills. that. <laughs> I mean, you got, you got, you got, you, you know, so let's, uh, let's figure out where you're going and then we can tell you what you managed to get away with. Do you are want you, to go back to the going... hotel, or do you want to go... Uh, the only issue here is, is if they have anything besides gold coins and the silver coins. You know, if they do come to the hotel, it might be evidence against us. Assuming they knew who did it. So I think the hotel's the only place we can really go. I always had these stolen gold coins. <laughs> I suspect we're heading back to the hotel because I don't think we have any place else to go. Okay. You head back to the hotel. Um, okay. So in Seamus's bag, once you count it all out, there are 200 Mexican silver dollars, 100 five pound sterling notes uh two negotiable drafts for a total of 15,000 Japanese yen and 20 US $20 gold pieces 
pretty impressive. So, you know, all in, Look. you've probably got almost as much hard currency on you right now as Carlton Ramsey is holding an escrow for you. <laughs> Oh, that worked out well. I mean, they, they can't say, you know, it was pretty much looks like a standard robbery. Now it's time for Coke and hookers. <laughs> and um, though, though we did see... I'm going to build my own Vegas. <laughs> though I do let the other guys know that, yeah, they did. the guy did have in his files on the same export import papers that we've seen in England and um, in Egypt. So uh, there's definitely, this guy is hip deep with the cult. We might not have found items, but uh, yeah, those papers pretty much proved that he was connected to it. Hmm. Uh, that much so, we know. Not a big surprise there. Uh, well, at least right. we didn't get spotted. I the, mean, uh... Uh, the, the paperwork that uh, Jesse uh, stole out of the assistant's office, uh, again, there's a number of shipping ledgers in there, um, and there are addresses that you recognize there, uh, including the Penhew Foundation uh, and Omar al-Shakti um, and Randolph Shipping Company in Darwin. Um and uh there are a few um artworks that are uh listed on there as as having uh not been shipped yet uh you would guess that these are probably still in the warehouse um and that is what you have right now. Well, gentlemen, do we need to keep that ledger? And I think we are finding proof more for ourselves, correct? Hmm. That's a good point. I mean... What do we... You know, I mean, none of it is terribly incriminating. It all, it all just lists, you know, artwork or you know, objects of art that are that are being as the uh, as the goods that have been transferred uh, between all of these places. So, it would. The only be reason I say this is in case we do get I mean, checked out, if we get rid of the ledger or burn the ledger. All we have is the coins, uh, which are a little harder to prove. The negotiable bonds are going to be tough, but I figure there's an easy way to hide those. But uh, the ledger is just, you know, kind of connect the dots for us, but it's not exact proof. What do you think? Can we get a safety deposit box or something? Because uh, I believe the cultists have already ransacked our rooms once this adventure, or, or once in once in Shanghai. I mean, uh, more than once in the adventure. Well, the hotel should have a safe if you want to use that. Uh, yeah, can we stick it in the safe? What are you sticking in the safe? The uh... The, the ledger, sure. No, I, why would we keep the ledger? Oh, you want to? You want to? All right. Well, I want to keep the coins and the, but the 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 ledger doesn't prove anything one way or the other. It proves to us, but if anyone else looked at it, it it really doesn't prove anything. So there isn't any more information about new transactions or anything like that. No, there was, there was nothing in the in the documents that you that you found that uh, there was no new information. Yeah. All right, yeah, I guess we can burn it then. Yeah, we're just gonna put in the safe the coins. What do we want to do with the two negotiable? Because that's a little. Can anybody use those, or is that specific to someone? They are. They are not. There is no one named on them. 
Uh, so they are bearer bonds, but you would have to turn them in at a bank that deals with uh, specifically Japanese currency. Mm. Well, I, I know of one person that might be able to use these. Mm. Certain Japanese uh, spy. True enough. Quite sure he could use some extra funds. So, what is next for you guys? It is, by the time you make it back to the hotel, it is just after midnight on the now morning of Monday, December 7th. I think once we have stuff in the safe, we take care of the burning the ledgers. I, I say, uh, let's get a good night's sleep. And I think our plan was trying to find the one guy's house. We know he used to work in the museum. Maybe someone at the museum knows where he lives. Now, in that one um, specialist that um, said he didn't have time to see us, you know, kind of hung up abruptly. Mr. Moo. What do you guys think? Sounds okay to me. Sounds like a yeah. plan. Uh, out of curiosity here, Keeper, is there, um, I know we've hit that warehouse. Do we know anywhere else um, um, the guy who owns the warehouse, do we know if he has a house or anything? Uh, you would imagine that he does, but you, we don't, uh, know where you don't know where it is. All right. So, yeah, later. Yeah, I, think you, also... I think you heard at some point that he, that he had a, a house in the French in the uh, French connection, but you, you have, you know, that's, that's as far as you know. That might be something else we can research tomorrow. Try to find this guy's house and then find out if um, the guy who owns the warehouse has a, um, where he lives. Who are oh. the other active leads? Um, the boat that, um, Someone drives around, parks near the warehouse. And I'm in my veins. The uh, uh, camera. Uh, that was one of them. Oh. Yes, the the yacht, the dark, the dark mistress. Yeah, the dark mistress. Thanks. That's the uh, the uh, the yacht that you have the the picture of uh, from uh, Jackson's hotel room. And that was near where we just were. Yes. And it only ever docks at night. Always gone by before dawn. And we did hear it had recently been in, correct? Uh, you heard it hadn't been in in a, in a while, so the harbor master expected that it would probably be coming in sometime over the next oh. few nights. So, other than that, I think it's time to get some rest. We can decide in the morning which one we're going to check out first. Okay. You do that. And then the next morning, uh, as you go downstairs to get breakfast, there is a familiar looking man waiting for you in the lobby. And. He yep, said, guy. And he says to you, I'm Jack Brady. I Don't. hear you've been looking for me. Perhaps we should go upstairs and talk. Bad news. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, of course. Come with us. Um, shall we have breakfast set up? Is there anything you prefer? Tea? Coffee? I've, I'm all set. Uh, excellent. Let me go upstairs. So he, uh, he, you know, looks you all over and says, you guys don't believe in discretion, do you? 
You realize how difficult you've made things for me in the city. I, I know you have some questions. If it's all the same, I'll talk now and you can ask your questions later. As far as I can make out, we're all in a lot of trouble. The more I learn about the situation, the scarier I get. When I spilled the beans to Jackson Elias, I figured people would read his book and do something about this cult. I, uh... Sorry he ended up that way. You guys friends of his? All the same, I did warn him, and I didn't hold nothing back. I'm warning you guys, too. The cult plays for keeps. Or maybe mugs like you already know that. <laughs> well, right from the start, I knew that Roger's little witch was trouble. She was tough as they come, and she had him round her little finger. He must have known she was trouble, too, because the more he saw her, the more crazy dreams he had. I thought it was great when he wanted to go to Egypt. That'd be the end of her, see? And things would get back to normal. I liked the guy. I owed him a lot. It seemed for a while that everything would work out. The trip over to London was a lot of fun. But once we got there, Roger pretty much spent every waking minute with Sir Aubrey, poring over some junk Warren Bassart had gotten hold of from this Najjar guy in Egypt. There was a black kind of head-and-shoulder statue that he'd stare at for hours. And there was a map he'd study and study, like a normal guy would check out a beautiful dame. Yes, there were parties and sightseeing trips, but it was mostly all about that map. Once we got to Cairo, Roger started having dreams again about meeting a god and crap like that. But now he wasn't drinking and the girl wasn't around, and the gentleman Roger had asked along started acting nuttier than Roger did, and so I said to myself, trouble's somewhere up the road. And then he really went off the deep end. He started telling me that we could meet the god as soon as he destroyed the eye and opened the path. That hotshot Huston should have talked Roger down, but he only encouraged him. So the first night we were up the Nile in Dashur, Roger snuck out and climbed up the Red Pyramid. Any of you guys ever climbed a pyramid? They're steep. But Roger started up that pile like a monkey, never looked back or hesitated once, which proved to me that the poor guy was absolutely crazy. But I followed him up. <laughs> I was crazy too. For about two-thirds the way up the Red Pyramid, you just climb over big chunks of rock. Sort of like something some dumb kid could make by piling up a million great big construction blocks. The pyramid builders filled in all the gaps with nice smooth stone. But then later, people stole that nice stone from the bottom of the pyramid. The high stuff was too hard to grab, and they couldn't finish the job. Well, Roger zipped right up that part, too, with me still behind, my eyes bulging out because I could barely find handholds to keep from bouncing down the whole damn pyramid. There's a little flat place at the top of the pyramid. When Roger reached the top, he put on some kind of robe and started making weird sounds as though he flipped for good. But then there was one hell of an explosion with all kinds of funny echoes and screams with it, and a big flash of light. Well, I laid there for a minute until it seemed safe to get up. He looked at me and said, The eye is gone, Jack. Now we can be gods. Well, that was just Roger talk, you know? But beside him there was this big patch ripped right out through the stones, and it looked like flesh. When I went back the next day, the patch had been filled in, as though the pyramid had repaired itself. But near the base of the pyramid, I found part of a rock, which looked like it could have been in that patch originally, and it had this weird sign on it. I took it, even though I didn't know what it was at the time. But I know what it is now. It's strong magic. Kept evil things away from us. 
and Roger deliberately broke its power. Still with my things if you want it. Two days later, the whole gang, Penhugh, Roger, Houston, and Patty, gave me the slip and disappeared into the bent pyramid. Some of the messenger boys went to find them, and they came out shrieking that the pyramid had eaten them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bingo, the workers run in all directions. The whole dig was deserted. In five minutes, the only person left in the whole area was me. Well, I went in. Sure enough, nobody was inside. I was worried. But a long time later, out come all the missing people from the pyramid. Roger says they'd been to Egypt. To the real Egypt. And that was about the most sensible thing he came out with. Penhew looked like he'd lost about five years, and Patty and Huston both seemed somehow changed. Nobody would explain where they'd been, and nobody cared that from that day on it was hard to hire workmen. After that, when I'd wake up in the night, the rest of the gang would be talking creepy lingo like I'd never heard before. Then one evening, Roger said he was going to show me the power they'd learned. We went out into the desert with a passel of Arabs. Everybody started screaming weird words and songs, and Penhugh beat the drum we got from the jar. When the creatures started coming out of the ground and eating the Arabs, and Roger and the others started laughing, way, I took my leave, as they say. Went on a real toot. Roger found me the next day and warned me that I'd better change my attitude. Well, I owed the kid, and I wouldn't desert him. But after that, I started thinking real good. Then we went to Kenya, and Roger filled me in during the trip. They'd found a true god, he said, who would rule the earth, and we would rule with that god, for we were the chosen of that god. The god had picked us to open the way for his return, and there was enough in what they said and what I saw to make me listen. Every week Penhew seemed a little younger and a little livelier. Patty was sick a lot. We were going to leave Nairobi for some place in the mountains where there was no river, no railway, no telegraph, no police, and nobody who looked friendly. I figured that old Jack Brady wouldn't live very long there, so I made some arrangements. On the last night in Nairobi, I drugged Roger, grabbed the cash box, it was all Roger's money anyway, and got me and him aboard an unscheduled deadhead freight train to, Num to Mombasa. Later I read that my guess was right. The newspaper said a lot of people died including Roger. I figured it was better everybody thought that than to tell them the truth, what with the state he was in and all. Anyway, my arrangements went off without a hitch. That happens when you think small and carry a lot of cash. When we got to Mombasa, we got off before the causeway and found a fisherman who was willing to go to Zanzibar for a few dollars. From there we hopped a coastal trader to Durban, and in Durban we dyed our hair, got some decent clothes, and sailed for Perth. Now on the way to Mombasa, Roger got some sleep, and he seemed to wake up a different person. I guess that being away from the influence of those other people let him return to his old self. I told him we were in a lot of trouble, and that he needed to hide out, and reminded him about the Arabs being killed in Egypt, and the God stuff, and so on. And he could remember it all right, although it didn't seem important to him somehow. But he understood the logic of the situation. After a week or so, though, his nightmare started, and he began to go off the deep end again. He was beginning to realize some of the stuff he'd done. I was in Shanghai while I was in the Marines. I had a fair number of friends here. By the time our ship put in in Hong Kong, Roger could go no farther. He began shrieking at shadows and everything that moved. So I put him in a sanitarium there. 
I had to use up most of the remaining money to get him settled. Then I went on to Shanghai, believing I'd never see any member of that damned expedition but Roger again. So I thought, until I looked through the naval glasses at a certain yacht and saw Sir Aubrey Penhue preening on the deck of the Dark Mistress. The worship of Nyarlathotep is global, involving every class and every race. There's the bro Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh, the Order of the Bloated Woman, the Cult of the Sandbat, the Cult of the Bloody Tongue, and so many more. One God, many faces. So, what questions well, you got for me? Might help for you to been awful here. persistent. Uh, let us tell us our story so you understand where we're coming from. That might help you. We started our intrepid, or this group before me started its intrepid adventures on a little trip to Peru. Um, and I go, uh, Seamus, do you want to take it from there? Yeah, we had all gathered for various reasons a trip uh, to Peru for an archaeological uh, trip. Turns out organized by a miscreant uh, under the control of some beings, which is best probably you forget we mentioned. And one worshiper of a certain god that you've already spoken about. Which is what point we came to befriend a certain Elias Jackson. Anyway, we survived that encounter, went our separate ways, kept a bit in touch, then all of a sudden got summoned to New York by Elias well, to deal with this situation that you brought forth. We got there, but too late. Our friend uh, Jackson had been slaughtered by one of the cults in New York City. We've permanently dealt with them. We've uh, since moved on and traveled a few different spots, England, Egypt, and dealt with cults there. But we were coming towards, I think, an end game. And we want to end this. Yes, and in fact, um, I do believe we found one of the capstones in Egypt as well. We were able to get that from um, an elderly lady whose son had worked at the site. Unfortunately. Um, by the way, Keeper, do we still have that stone or was that taken You as do well? still have that, yes. And I go, and, and you can see it as well. So you probably have the piece that is missing. He says, uh, uh, he says, well, your half of the eye and mine might make nice bookends, but that's it. Yes, that's why I figured. Um, as he said, you, uh, I joined a group in England. Um, and there we dealt with um, one of the main leaders, but um, there seemed to be fighting within the faction. And one of, um, so one of the Egyptian members took over. However, we do know they were building some device, some type of flying or rocket type thing. Um, we were able to at least deal with that stuff so that they wouldn't have it. In Egypt, we took care of that area cult's plan of bringing back a former female queen um, that had been close to uh, worshiping Nara Lepetep. Um, like you, we have discovered it is wide ranging as well. We have come here to stop them if possible. Um, we were trying to get in hold of you to kind of join forces with you since uh, we figured the enemy of our enemy is our friend. Um, and in fact, um, I know right now we just, um, um, have been obviously roughing your feathers. We also 
um, have been busy elsewhere. We happen to know that Ho Fang is hip deep in with the cult, and we know that they have an island nearby. Yes. Well, you've been busy. Um, we've also made Japanese military attache, sort of a spy, you might say. We have been able to at least convince them that you're a good guy. And it's actually the cult that's causing issues. Um, so we may get some support uh, from the Japanese, at least. Uh, mm -hmm. But we know that their big activity is coming up. Interesting. Um, the Japanese are a new piece on the board. Mm -hmm. That I didn't know about. Everything else that you've mentioned, I, uh, I've found out about during my times, although I'm not sure that you've been as successful as you might think in stopping well, I... the various uh, the various factions uh, as as I think you found out in in uh, England it's a multi-headed beast and every time you chop one off three more pop up you are correct we... oh in New York we kind of dealt with it I believe pretty successfully yeah, but... You're right, England, just another head popped in. We probably hurt Egypt on our own personal plans, but on the grand scheme, you're right. Um, but at this time point, we need, I figure you and we need as many allies as possible to stop this. Well, um, let me fill in a few gaps that you don't know. Your half of the eye and mine might make nice bookends, but that's it. You mm -hmm. can't remagic them. But there is a spell to create a new eye of light and darkness. I liberated a 12th century book from Lin Yen Yu called The Seven Cryptical Books of Hassan, which contains the ritual. My associate, Mr. Mu, is working on a translation, but it's slow going. The various cults plan to work together to open the gate on the day of the solar eclipse next month. There are three critical junctions that can be warded up with, the, with an eye of light and darkness to stop that. One of them is on Grey Dragon Island. I plan to create a new Eye of Light and Darkness there. I'm also working with a militia group here. I've convinced them that it's in their best interest to stop what's happening on Grey Dragon Island. I've they don't know all the details, but I've convinced them that foreign powers are creating a new weapon there that is a threat to their new China, and that's all they need to know. We are planning for an eventual assault on Grey Dragon Island for when we and then once we're there, we'll create the Eye of Light and Darkness and also hopefully stop, put a stop to the ritual. I have heard rumors that uh, Sir Aubrey is building some strange flying machine that is supposed to be critical to opening this gate that the gods will come pouring through. So we need to make sure that that also doesn't happen. Did we not try and convince their Japanese contact that uh, a naval bombardment of the island might not have been a bad idea. We can, we said that that wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, 
or as as I mentioned, I do believe I also told him that, or getting rid of a certain ship. Um, we have just recently come across some funds um, recently, and I'm quite sure that you, Mr. Brady, and your group probably could use the funds to be better equipped. Would I be wrong on that? We'll take any resources that you can that you can give us, but frankly, most of our problems are not ones you can throw money at. We are more than willing to our, provide our knowledge as well. I mean, we do have Seamus here who is quite um, a wizard with um, gadgets and materials. And several other of us are have specialities in our field. We are more than willing to lend our support and fight in this battle. So I'm happy to take some help, but I'm going to tell you, you guys have already kicked the hornet's nest, partially by going around town and mentioning my name in public to anyone who would listen. That's put a big target on both our backs. But you've got at least two different groups following you everywhere you go. Oh, yeah. We figured, oh, we we figured it's that. Uh... But, you know, that might be to your advantage at this time point, where we could be... Um, the decoy to I what you don't really think be the you first understand time. how much danger you're in. I don't think you understand what we've Try already us. faced. <laughs> we faced creatures and monstrosities. So have I, my friends. So, so have I. We. So then you can understand. But so within within Shanghai. Knives and bullets are just as deadly as strange creatures from another world. And no one will think twice about it. Bunch of foreigners getting themselves killed. Just another day here in, uh, in Shanghai. Okay. Um... What are you suggesting then, Mr. Brady? I mean, come on. How often do you get a bunch of people that have had in a very similar circumstances of yourself and believe what most people would write off as considering the ravings of a lunatic or the bottom of a barrel? Bottle, sorry. Touche. Don't suppose any of you are writers. <laughs> Put it, Jesse. <laughs> I've done a bit of writing here and there. Well, I'd highly recommend that, assuming we survive this, that you write up the story so that uh, people know about what's going on with this cult so that uh, there isn't a next time. Because, let's face it, with these things, there's always a next time. But at the very least, we can scuttle their plans enough that we can kick the can down the road past January 14th. Live to fight another day. It seems to me that it would be best for us to almost be decoys. You know... Decoys, Maybe, decoys as, get killed in this in this line. Oh, well, we, I said, you know, I, we never, at least some of us have never expected to come out of this alive anyway. We were, many of us are fortunate to be this far. Already lost uh, a few. I think that in this, you know, as well as I do in any operation, there's going to be death. And I don't you suppose know, any of you are scholars of ancient Chinese writing. 
our closest scholar is over check. there. Nope. And he's not a scholar of Chinese, but he's a scholar of other things. Not uh, exactly a Chinese scholar. Or uh, perhaps speak any uh, speaker studied any any ancient uh, Chinese dialects. My problem is that Mr. Mu is an old man. He can only work on this so many hours a day, and frankly, he's the only one that I trust with the seven cryptical books. Madam Yen Yu has been urgently trying to get them back, and I need to spend a good amount of my time just trying to fend her fend her off and give her other places to look so that she doesn't uh, find out that I've taken them to Mu. If Madam Swallow finds the true lo location of the book that I stole from her, then if she gets it back before I do the translation, then that's game over for all of us. Um, gentlemen, if you don't mind, do you think that he could use the money that we found last night? Wait, what are we using it for? We don't have anything we can use it for. We have currency. Uh, uh, you know, definitely if we could give him a portion. Hang on to those bear bonds to deal with our for our Japanese contact. Right. And a couple others. There. Right. And we figured the Japanese contact might be a little bit iffy with your Chinese counterparts. However, it is always nice to have an ace in the hole. Uh, I hand him over the a good portion of the gold and silver. Thought you put it in the hotel safe. Yeah, I know. I'm going to go down and. All right, it's in the hotel safe. Yeah, um, I can go down and get it. He says, he says, as as I said, money is not the. All right. Not so what's that's going not to the help issue. us here. Well, we can give you what we have. It's not a lot, but you know we're willing to help out. Um, and like I said, you know, obviously. We're going to need to stay away from, from where you are because they're following us. However, we can all decide ahead of time when to strike. And by that time point, it'll be too late to bother you. So... Jack says, I think that uh, that Mu probably has two more weeks, maybe a little bit less. Uh, we will of, personally stay away from Mu just to... On the translation. Um, if any of you had the capability of helping him, I'd bring one of you know, one of you to the house, but uh, if you don't, then uh, then it is what it is. Uh, next week is going to be a difficult time for us, uh, as I'm sure you've figured out. Uh, all these cults like to do some murderous rituals on the dark of the moon and we've got the new moon smack in the middle of next week i expect that they're going to be pounding the streets looking for sacrifices and any one of us would be a good candidate so we're going to need to as much as possible uh be inconspicuous 
at least until we can get the uh, the translations complete. Once once that's done and we know what's involved in this ritual of to create a new eye of light and darkness, then we can start making plans for what our attack on Grey Dragon Island looks like. But even if we even if we somehow manage to obliterate the entire island from everything that I've that I've heard, every expert that I've talked to, it sounds like the ritual would still somehow take place without it. The only thing that will absolutely ensure that the ritual can't take place is to place the eye on one of the three cardinal points, and the closest one to us, the only one I'm going to be able to reach in time after the translation is done, is going to be Grey Dragon Island. Well, then we'll be ready when you let us know to join you. We will stay away from Moo and several other people. We will wander the city until that time point. You said they're going to be looking for sacrifices just to keep them off you, all the parties. Uh, uh, Got to admit, having some of us out there drawing some fire, because let's face it, they'll try and kidnap us. They've tried kidnapping us at every place we've been in the world so far. It's usually <laughs> gone very badly for them. And we do seem to bring them bad luck when it comes to that. But, um, yeah, we'll be more than willing to do our part to help you out. Um, if you want, uh, what do you want me to do about the Japanese um, possibilities? They are a naval power. It's they a piece could... on the board that I hadn't thought about. But at the same time, I know how the Japanese and the Chinese don't mix after the Great War. I oh. need to tread carefully there so that I don't piss off my local contacts. Because, frankly... I don't, I don't see how this isn't go this is going to work without a commando force to breach the islands. Guns mm. aren't going to be enough. So let me see what I can do to broach this before before you uh, you bring him in to the fold. I, I will to... not. Two points. This is more gaming wise. At this point in history, submarines are in usage. Does the Japanese Navy have any that's yes. publicly known? Yes. Okay. Which would then indicates why my question would be would it be useful for a Navy to have a sub cause uh, the sinking of any vessels? Yes. The problem is, as near as I can tell, they don't have any weapons vehicles that they're, you know, they're not bringing destroyers or battleships onto Grey Dragon Island. It's all two small boats. Ofang and Penhue's private yachts. Still sinkable. They're sinkable, oh. but <laughs> and your point it's a, is <laughs> it's a it's a difficult target to try to convince some military power to go after. And oh. well, no, even if we don't, there's well, just to let you know the Japanese are very concerned about the flying device that they are developing 
I do believe that In Japanese might... aren't the only people that know how to wield some explosives here. Yes, uh... <laughs> I'm going to get my explosions. <laughs> Interesting that that word of that has has reached a foreign power. I didn't oh. realize that uh, that they had been so lax in their operational security. That's uh... we told the British government, didn't we, at some point too? Yeah, but the the British government knew something about it as well by now. What you don't Very realize, Mr. Brady, is I also am an operative for the British government. I see. Well, interesting. So my my, my major concern is not being helping them so much as stopping this. I don't care who I use at this time point. Um, government wise, except for my good friends here and you, because I know what you've been through. I want this stopped. And I agree with you, it needs to be stopped. And I am willing to sacrifice certain government principalities just to make sure it's done. Well, I appreciate the information. And like I said, I, you think about how you want things to be used and we will do our best to see if it can be done. This way you can wash your hands of any contact with the Japanese to your Chinese counterparts. There's a tea house around the corner from your hotel, The Shining mm -hmm. Moon. Every morning, one of you should go there and order tea and sweet biscuits. If I have news for you, the waitress will slip a rice paper note under the biscuits. I highly recommend reading the note and then eating it afterwards if I have something for you. Excellent. I'll set up a... and. I'll set up a meeting. If you need to get in touch with me, I will I will let Chu Min know that you guys are on the level. He and I have a similar signal every morning at the Autumn Moon Tea House. You can meet him there every morning, 7 a.m., should, uh, should you need to get word back to me. I'd prefer that you go through, the, through that as opposed, since you know that you're being followed, as opposed to bringing, possibly bringing a tale to Mr. Moo's house. We don't plan to go anywhere near Moo's house now that we know that that's important. However, we do plan to go all over the place that's safe to drive our followers off the course. Excellent. They'll think that, you know, that way you're free, a little bit free of possibly being found out. Very well. Well, gentlemen, this was a very fruitful sharing of information. Do you have any last questions for me before I slip out the back? I look at the rest of the gang. I'm mute myself.
just so we're on all on the same page uh here uh our friend Lias Jackson got killed over this mess and I'm sorry for that he and... came here seeking me out close to a year ago now and I was as frank with him as I could be about everything that had happened and the dangers that were involved but you knew Jackson as well, you know, probably better than I did. You know that he was like a dog with a bone, and there was no way he was letting it go once he'd gotten this far. Also, I feel like by the time he got here, he'd seen too much. He had that look in his eye that Roger got sometimes. Oh. No, I, I understand that completely. Just wanted to make it clear that we've been hell-bent for vengeance, and we ain't stopping now. I understand. And with that, he goes, uh, he leaves your room and goes out into the hall. Well, gentlemen, I think I know what we're all doing for the next period of time until we need to buckle down for a while while they're looking for people to kill. I do suspect we're going to a tea house every morning, a couple of us. And then we're going to be going everywhere around the city that's relatively safe for us to go as foreigners and not hitting Moo and a few others, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're a little past where we would uh, good where we would normally break. We want to uh, take a break here. That's okay, it's fresh. Yeah, That'd be yeah. Good. How's it going? Sounds That'd good. All right, uh, let's need to get a drink. Uh, go take a break. Yeah, we'll come back in ten minutes and figure out what we're we what we're doing for the rest of the night. All right, all right, all right guys. All right, thanks. Thanks. Those of you watching live, enjoy the break music.